Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the organizers for this uh, last, minute, um, last minute slot. Um, uh, to be able to fill it uh, we, with a presentation, we needed to convert uh, keynote uh, slides into PowerPoint slides in literally the last minute, which turned out to be a major challenge. Um, so please uh, accept my apologies for the imperfectness of what you are going to see. I try to compensate you uh, with what you are going to hear. Um, in the following few minutes, I'd like to address uh, um, how our capability of um, tracing the fastest phenomena outside the atomic core, um, the motion of electrons, may allow us to contribute to shaping the future of healthcare. To uh, render atomic scale electronic motion accessible to human observation, such as uh, the migration in molecules, uh, as uh, animated here, we need to slow down time, or in the language of microscopy, we need to magnify time by a factor of 10 to the 16. Time has indeed been magnified by this very factor in this slow motion replay. This corresponds to the combined magnifying power offered by the world's largest telescope, which is currently under construction, and a state-of-the-art microscope in space. It is this magnifying power that attosecond metrology furnishes us in time. The main message that I would like to convey to you in the next few minutes is not about the scientific result, nor about its impact. Rather, I'd uh, like to exemplify how purely curiosity-driven uh, basic research um, may spawn applications which uh, were unforeseen, completely unforeseeable at the time when the actual goals of research were defined, such as uh, in our case, the control and measurement of the electric field oscillations of light waves, first accomplished by attosecond uh, metrology some two decades ago, which 15 years later uh, opened the door to an unforeseen application, to probing human health. How can these capabilities actually do this? By accessing uh, the global molecular landscape of human blood, as you all know, the composition of which is a very sensitive indicator of health disease transitions, via field-resolved spectroscopy. We expose samples of uh, human blood plasma <clears throat> to an extremely short infrared laser pulse, which excites molecular vibrations, very much in the same way as striking a tuning fork uh, induces uh, macroscopic vibrations. The vibrating molecules radiate infrared waves in the wake of the ultra-fast, ultra-short pulsed excitation. The resultant signal is characteristic of the sample's molecular composition and can now be precisely and accurately measured, sampled with attosecond metrology. Such an electric field molecular fingerprint changes whenever an emerging chronic condition, such as, for instance, cancer, uh, changes the composition of the sample. 
The big question then is whether this change causes a measurable signal in this infrared fingerprint and whether this change is in robust correlation with the condition. We could meanwhile answer this question in the affirmative for, for eight cancer entities with uh, classification efficiencies uh, area under the curve, AUC values for the experts in the audience uh, ranging between 80 and 90 percent. For uh, case uh, cohorts uh, containing stage one to stage four um, samples. Of course, it would be very important to actually do a stage by stage classification. We have collected enough samples for this only for lung cancer so far, and that's what I would like to share with you here. Uh, uh, this slide shows you the electric field uh, molecular fingerprints of nearly 1,000 case control samples for non-small cell lung cancer. And as you see, um, if you, we zoom in into temporal domain uh, several hundred femtoseconds after the excitation peak, uh, differences became uh, clearly discernible. Uh, and uh, these uh, differences should allow algorithms to actually sense the disease, to, to recognize the disease and differentiate it uh, from uh, healthy control samples. That's exactly what we have done, in this, in this, this time uh, stage by stage. And as you can see, <coughs> uh, the algorithm indeed uh, is able, the trained algorithm is indeed able to recognize uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer at stage three, stage two, and even with some, some efficiency, stage one, uh, which is quite promising. <clears throat> However, the disease-induced signal, infrared signal, that is behind this capability of, of detection could do a much better service if uh, we would use it for, or we, we could reference it to the person's own reference samples collected before contracting the disease. Simply because such a self-referencing is tainted with much less biological noise as compared to population reference, uh, referencing um, suffering from a bigger spread of control samples. Uh, our um, in silico uh, modeling indeed confirmed this expectation and uh, predicts a um, unprecedented 80% uh, classification efficiency for stage one non-small cell lung cancer. I should emphasize by using self-referencing and how can we use self? How can we utilize self-referencing only in a uh, repetitive screening scheme, in a regular by regular screening? Um, regular screening on a population level is probably only realistic if the health data set that uh, we can access, that we collect from our blood samples can inform on also other chronic conditions, severe chronic conditions, such as cardiovascular, metabolic disorders, or hopefully neurodegenerative uh, disorders. That's what our team uh, is actually working on in Munich. And in Budapest, I cordially thank them for their dedication and uh, commitment to a grand goal which we may not be able to achieve in our active time. <clears throat> it is all the more important that uh, we devote sufficient attention to caring for the next generations, particularly where they are in need where they are depri deprived of their homes, schools, and friends. That's why we 
established uh, the organization Science for People for collecting donations to realize projects in cooperation with uh, uh, youth organizations uh, in Ukraine in order to be able to improve the living conditions and, and in particular to improve the education of children and teenagers within Ukraine. They deserve a chance uh, for contributing to our future just as our own children do. Thank you. Thank you.